The financial system is more fragile than we are led to believe. We saw a great example of that not just with the GameStop and Reddit retail traders rocking the boat, but more importantly back in 2019 during the repo crisis. They refused to acknowledge what was going on. The direct and obvious denial proved that they are unwilling to support the financial system and instead are intentionally trying to destabilize it. They poured more money in than had ever been injected and simultaneously simultaneously refuse to acknowledge their actions. Wake up, the time for complacency is over. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. You can't ignore this. Now, I know most people out there aren't going to see this video. The vast majority won't share this video, but for those who do and see it to the end, I assure you this is key, this is integral, not just for what we're gonna see over the coming months, but what we could see into the future. This system is designed to fail. It is like this on purpose. There are people who believe the Federal Reserve is there supporting the system. System. And in a sense, they kind of are. But if you take it back one level, zoom out, peel back a layer, however you want to look at it, they are actually creating the mess in the first place. That's the way I acknowledge this. They refuse to talk about it, but the Federal Reserve and the other central banks, particularly the Fed, is doing this on purpose. They destabilize it in order to bring in, to usher in a new system. What that's going to be, I don't know. There's a lot of speculation on that. That's not what I do on this channel. But if you actually go through all the data, you will see it for yourself. It's so key. It's so important. And yet the majority of people won't talk about it. Why? Because they say, look, I don't, I don't you know, I'd rather just worry about my 401k. I'd rather just worry about my seven shares of Amazon. But that's never going to empower you. So that's what we're going to do here. In this video, I'm going to do something I don't normally do. And that is to focus primarily on one article. This is important because they get into everything. They experience explain why this is important. They talk about, you know, give you a little introduction there. They talk about all the issues. I don't have any more time. I need to get into this right away. So let's go. If you are part of the shrinking group of people who had seen the previous video I had done, I mentioned this and what I'll show you in just a second with the chart. But essentially what we're looking at here is Yellen shift on vast treasury cash pile poses problem for Powell. Treasury is slashing its bulging bank account at the Fed. Move pushes down money market rates and may make them go negative. So this is something that I really wanted to highlight and spend this video talking to you today. Even though I know that few will watch it, it's not about the views. It's not a popularity contest. This is about bringing the most important information up front. Like I said, I have to go through this whole thing, so stick with me. I'll try to make it as uh, informative as possible. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen is giving the Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell a bit of a headache when it comes to managing the money markets. Already, low short-term interest rates are set to sink further, potentially below zero. That's key right there. After the Treasury announced plans earlier this month to reduce the stockpile of cash it amassed at the Fed over the last year to fight the situation that was going on. The move, which aims to return its cash position at the central bank to normal levels, and we've heard about, by the way, normalization, and that was a lack of stimulus or simply stopping with all the stimulus packages as well as what the Federal Reserve was doing, and that never, of course, happened. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. With uh, will flood the financial system with liquidity, very important, and complicate Powell's effort to keep a tight grip over the money market rates. Quote, all this cash from the Treasury's general account will have to go back from the Fed and into the market. It will drive short-term rates lower as, they, uh, as far as they can go. Now, we'll see how that works out, like I said. But the immediate thing that I want to tell you right here and as an investor as somebody who has their money in this system the expectation is that you've got liquidity being pumped in that is you you can see right here it's not as if we have to speculate this is their intention the possibility here is that the markets could get a huge boost up it's like a stimulus package it's like QE going right in if you want to think of it like that but 
We don't know what's going to happen. Where will that money go? How it gets moved around? How long it all takes? Whether they will stop? Whether they're going to exceed what the market is expecting and so on? That is all speculative at this point. While the Fed has pushed its benchmark overnight policy rate down to nearly zero to aid the inflicted economy, a drop in short-term market rates into the negative territory could prove disruptive, especially for money market funds that invest in short-dated treasury securities. Banks may also find themselves hamstrung by effectively being forced to hold large, unwanted cash balances at the central bank. This is something that we had talked about previously, 2019, and one of those people right here is Zoltan. So we're going to talk about him in just a second. The Treasury's decision unveiled at its quarterly refunding announcement will help unleash what Credit Suisse Group analyst Zoltan calls a tsunami of reserves into the financial system and onto the Fed's balance sheet, combined with the Fed's asset purchases. That could swell reserves to about $5 trillion by the end of June from an already lofty $3.3 trillion now here's how it works treasury sends out let, let's break it down this is, the, this is the reason i'm showing you the entire article because it, it really explains everything and by the way just to take a step back zoltan was the one who was explaining why the repo crisis was taking place and all of that it is really important with his previous work at the federal reserve he has very very good insight first-hand insight as to what that was all about all right here's how it works treasury sends out checks drawn on its general account at the fed which operates like the government's checking account. When recipients deposit the funds with their bank, the bank presents the check to the Fed, which debits the Treasury's account and credits the bank's Fed account, otherwise known as their reserve balance. We talked about this a lot during that period of time in 2019, but now this is starting to come up. This was the chart I was talking about, the one I showed you in the previous video, but for those who haven't seen it, I'll just quickly go over it. Long way down, Treasury's cash balance is expected to fall by hundreds of billions of dollars. And you can see as soon as March 2020 came around, this started to pick up. And essentially, the expectation is that this is coming down, and as a result, that money moves inward. Now, I don't know, again, what's going to happen but this is it, the U.S. Treasury total operating balance. It had been a period here, let's say a year when this was uh, you know, elevated to this point. But when it does come through, the effect on the markets could be, let's say, positive because it had that stimulus sort of effect. But it may cause a problem in the financial system. So the ripples through that system, we don't know exactly how it will all come to be and what we can anticipate from it. Dollar pressure. Market pros are trying to parse out the implications of what could be an unprecedented surge of liquidity. Some forecast downward pressure on the dollar. And of course, we have seen what has happened to the dollar over the last little while. Certainly a lot of pressure going down on it. There's no doubt about it. Others predict buoyant stock and bond prices. That's what we were talking about earlier. And of course, that, that's possible. Still, others see it mostly as a non-event, except when it comes to the money markets. There are limits on how far that can go. And basically talking about what's happening here with the Federal Reserve and the Treasury's connections. But we know already that they do work hand in hand. The Federal Reserve makes the commands, and I think it's pretty obvious now at this point. There were some that suggested that the government, that the Treasury, was taking over the Federal Reserve. Here we are years later that it's absolutely not the case, never was. I'm not sure how that came to be, but you know, here we are today and we, and we realize the Federal Reserve is more powerful than ever. They have as much, well, as they love to call it, independence. But of course, I like to call that secrecy. Just use a different word and suddenly you start to think, wait a minute, 
that is true. In preparing to lower its cash hoard at the central bank to $500 billion by the end of June from around a gargantuan $1.6 trillion now, Treasury is merely returning to a more normal, is that what you want to call it? Anyway, modus operandi. $500 billion to me you know, maybe today, if it's not at least a trillion, we don't even worry about talking about it anymore. But 500 billion is a lot of money. I mean, this system needs so much liquidity to operate. It's weak, it's fragile. And we only realize that when we've got problems, when everything is running smoothly, hey, nothing to worry about, right? Treasury had just been delaying the day of reckoning for the Fed. So, of course, again, we'll see what happens. Last point I want to make from this article right here. Okay, let's do it quickly. Others see a potential bond market decline if the rule snaps back as banks sell treasuries to meet leverage restrictions and make room on their balance sheets for the increasing number of reserves they must hold. So there's some implications here that they're just unsure of what's going to happen. The concern is that it would further impair banks' willingness to make markets, to make markets in treasuries, to hold treasuries, and to extend repo financing so that others can hold treasuries. This is important. We'll see what happens as a result of all of this. And Hopefully, there will not be another repo crisis because that could unfortunately create a firestorm that wreaks havoc on individuals and their investments. I just wanted to touch on this before we finish off the video. Rise in treasury yields prompts speculation of a tantrum for markets. If you remember 2013, we had the taper tantrum. The taper tantrum in 2013 was a sudden spike in treasury yields due to the market panic after the Federal Reserve announced that it would begin tapering its quantitative easing program. Oh my goodness, a historic amount of money printed into the system, historically low interest rates, and they were just going to inch it back, just inch it back with with tons of notice and that was something that created a big problem if you remember that just think about when they started to increase interest rates years and years and years and years after they brought them down and it was an embarrassment that they couldn't even get it to 2.5 percent 2.5%, and that's historically extremely low, and then had to apologize for doing that. Major central banks around the world have cut interest rates to historic lows and launched unprecedented quantities of asset purchases in a bid to shore up the economy. However, the recent rise in yields suggests that some investors are starting to anticipate a tightening of policy sooner than anticipated to accommodate a potential rise in inflation. So this is what they're saying, because they're all going for this supposed 2% inflation rate and are willing to tolerate that it goes beyond that. As a result, this inflation needs to be basically squashed down, and you could do that by increasing interest rates. In order to push interest rates down unnaturally, this is done via open market operations. I'll talk about this in my second book in particular. And essentially, you look at open market operations, it's printing money. It is printing money. That's the task. That's what they do. So if they're going to print less money when they're allowing it to rise a little bit, that has an impact. Less liquidity in the system and less of it making its way into different assets. We don't know the way it unfolds and where it goes. Nobody knows. But essentially, that's the process. That's what has led us here today. And I hope that this video was informative to you. I know it's different than what I normally do, showing you 42 charts, 16 articles. But I really wanted to focus in on a on a subject today. I hope uh, you know it wasn't too many people falling asleep. I know that at this point, you got about 30% of the viewership. I just want to thank you for being here, sticking with me throughout this process. Again, I want to reiterate the fact that this isn't a popularity contest. As you can see, the channel had plateaued a long time ago, and that's okay because I'm trying to do my best to inform you. I've, I've, I haven't talked about this before, but one of the things that I wanted to do was have somebody work with me on the research, and I would basically take 
the profits, there's not much profit any, anyway from this business, but to take those profits, give it to somebody else, whatever whatever that might be, and basically to help me along with all the research, there's just too much coming in. I haven't made an annou- official announcement or anything like that, but it's something I've been thinking about regardless. I'm going to end the video there. If you found it informative, please click that like button. You could support me by clicking the like button. And for those who watch the advertisements on anybody's channel out there, you're supporting the creator. So I want to thank you for that. If you are wanting, you know, know about e-commerce and so on this is for free I, I do this i did this course for free i made it for you for my subscriber and there's no fees you don't have to pay anything which is crazy because a lot of these courses are a thousand dollars plus so you can check it out at the amazon gps.com if you want to learn about the financial system and you want it explained extremely easily it's available in these two books the one on the left is the newer one but they sort of fit into each other like lock and key so there's key information in both and uh like i said lock and key you can check it out at the link in the description if you want to check this video out if you haven't already i would highly recommend it definitely take a look click it i'll see you there